a new plan to spend 174 billion dollars over the next five years for deep water oil and gas exploration. Does this make sense or what? Finally, energy independence. It's not just a slogan anymore. If you live in Brazil, because it ain't us that's doing it. It's Brazil. They're the ones doing the exploration. But don't worry, the U.S. has a plan too. We're going to drive magical plug-in cars by 2012. This is uh, President Obama on his top priority initiative today. The days of Washington dragging its heels are over. My administration will not deny facts. We will be guided by them. We cannot afford to pass the buck or push the burden onto the states. And that's why I'm directing the Environmental Protection Agency to immediately review the denial of the California waiver request and determine the best way forward. This will help us create incentives to develop new energy, that will make us less dependent on the oil that endangers our security, our economy, and our planet. By the way, in another attempt to prove that Washington has absolutely no clue on what you think, or, or really don't care, a Pew poll uh, just uh, ranked the top 20 voter concerns. Guess where global warming came in? All the way down to the bottom. Last one. Number 20. Chris Horner, author of the uh, new book, Red Hot Lies, Hello, Chris. How are you? Hi, Glenn. I love to hear that the, this uh, administration will not deny facts, as in global warming. Well, apparently not. Uh, they might be onto something about talking about letting science dictate their decisions now. You notice his first two of three arguments for his global warming agenda were energy security, meaning he at least acknowledges that he can't make the global warming case or the case for the global warming agenda by talking about global warming. I, it's a small step. I, I have noticed, Chris, and, 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 and maybe this is right where you're going, I have noticed that they're calling it a, a clean energy initiative now, no longer green energy. Is that because they know that, I mean, I'm not kidding you, I mean, listen to this list, economy, jobs, terror, social security, education, energy, Medicare, health care, deficit reduction, uh, health insurance, helping the poor, crime, moral, de moral decline, and still six more down is global warming in our list of priorities as a, as a people. Right. Well, 15 years after being told that we've got 10 years left, people still live in a world where they can look out the window, they know it's cooling. And President Obama seems to know that this doesn't sell. So this is rebranding. Remember something very important, because you're going to hear an awful lot of it in the next 12 months. Al Gore just raised $300 million from people he's not telling us who. He doesn't have to. That's fine. But $300 million simply to rebrand global warming as a climate crisis. So there's going to be a lot of this. It's, not, it's nothing more than spin in order to get the public or force something on the public that they clearly are not buying. Okay. They're, they're now talking California. I mean, a state that is bankrupt, a state that, I'm not kidding you, if you get a refund in your tax, they're going to issue an IOU. They're now making this a priority to raise the, the, uh, the admission standards, which will cost taxpayers or, or car owners in California an additional $1,000. What is That's wrong a stimulus with these to the economy, people? Glenn. What? <laughs> That's called a stimulus. Uh, yeah, look, this is also called the Slow Learners Club. Okay, California's energy policies are a significant reason why they have regulated themselves into bankruptcy and people are fleeing the state by the month. Now we want to nationalize California's global warming policies and guess what? This global warming vehicle standard is the first thing that the European Union jettisoned when they began to realize they actually can't walk the talk of their global warming alarmist rhetoric. And by the way, they're not walking the talk. Right. So this, this is going to prove to be a debacle. This is what, well it's California. Look at California, I'm all in. If you want to do this, I'm serious. I am absolutely all in. This show airs at 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. You keep this up. I'm going to have a lot of people sitting at home watching Cheetos until you can't afford cable. cable. <laughs> I'm going to have like a huge number every night in California because you're all going to be sitting at home looking for something to do. My gosh, now you've got, you've got uh, um, uh, Obama saying that there's a possibility they're going to go for Kyoto in a way, and help me out on this, Chris, in a way that we wouldn't have to have the Senate ratify this? Do you know about that? Right, that's, the, that's the, the conventional talk is that, well, you know, if we don't call it a treaty, even if the rest of the world does, then we don't need to get that impossible, I assure you, 
two-thirds Senate vote in approval of a treaty as the Constitution, Article 2, Section 2 requires. Remember, we did sign Kyoto. Bill Clinton signed it. George Bush never unsigned it. Okay. The Senate could have voted on it for the past 10, 11 years now. See, they don't want to because they know they can't get two-thirds. But if you change that to a simple majority in a no amendment, no filibuster procedure, it's, it's called fast track. It's okay. how you got NAFTA. NAFTA is a treaty that we didn't call a treaty. Chris, thanks a lot. I have to tell you, America, this is the thanks problem. If you want to pass it, if you want to do the Kyoto Treaty, then pass it and do it the right way. Do the constitutional way. Stop jamming these things down our, our throat and finding back doors to everything. Do it the right way. Have some damn honor, please.